traveler. This is the mysterious traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, and it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable. If you can. Where are we going? Are we going to join Walter Cabot as he takes a little excursion into crime? I call the story Murder Goes Free. Late one foggy evening several years ago, as I was walking along one of the main streets of a large city, I was stopped by an elderly man who seemed unusually agitated. Pardon me, sir. May I speak with you for a moment? Of course. There's... Here, perhaps this will help. Oh, please, please. It isn't money I want. I just want someone to listen to me. No one is interested in seeing justice done. No one. Well, I should be glad to hear what you have to say. You... You will listen to my story? Yes. I want to confess something that's on my conscience. I've confessed a hundred times. No, a thousand times. Yet no one will believe me. You must help me make them believe. It all began that day in my office. When Martin, my son, came in to see me. Hello, Dad. How are you? Oh, Martin. I'm glad you're here. I want to talk to you. Oh? <laughs> Sounds as if I've done something you don't approve of, Dad. Did you read the gossip column in this morning's Daily Ledger? Oh, know that. Why haven't you told me about this woman, Diana Winters? Well, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I just didn't think it was important. You've that. always told me about your other friends. Are you ashamed of Diana Winters? No, of course not. Why should I be? Martin, you know as well as I do that her reputation is... Well, spectacular, to put it kindly. Well, stories about her all lies. That's I'm all. not taken in by gossip, Martin. I happen to know that this Winters woman is just plain no good. Dad, I won't have you talking about her like that. Martin, you don't love this woman, do you? Yes. Yes, I do. Martin, you must give her up. Dad, I'm old enough to make my own decision. Can't you see what she's doing to you? She's just a predatory gold Dad, digging... stop talking about her like that. All right, son. That's the way you feel about it. You'd better go. All right. Goodbye, Dad. Oh, Martin. My son. Oh, perhaps that's... Come in. Oh, it's you, Norman. Hello, Walter. What's the matter with Martin? This past him in the reception room, he appeared to be quite upset. We've had a quarrel. Oh? It's the first one we've ever had. Was it about that bit of gossip in this morning's Daily Ledger? Yes. Imagine Martin's name linked with that of a... Martin will be all right. He'll get over it. No, no, he won't. I can't stand by and watch him ruin his life. I've got to do something. I wouldn't if I were you, Walter. You've got to let Martin make his own decisions. He's no child. Oh, you're a fool, Norman. You expect me to watch the only person who means anything to me get hurt? No, I suppose you won't. What are you going to do? I'm going to have a talk with that woman, Diana Winters. Oh, Walter Cabot. Oh. Walter Cabot. I see. And I have a word in private with you. <laughs> really, I have guests. Yes, it will only take a few minutes. Well, all right. Come this way. Thank you. Now, I'll bother us here. I hardly know how to begin, Miss Winters. Then let's uh, be frank, Mr. Cabot, and save ourselves time. You've come here to ask me to give up your son, haven't you? Yes. Well, then you may as well know that you're wasting your time. I love Martin, and I won't give him up. I know better. Since we're being so frank, I'll get to the point. How much do you want to let Martin go? Are you insinuating what oh, I just Oh, now, come, thought? Miss Winters. There's no need to put on an act for me. <laughs> How much? Really, Mr. Cabot, you know, you're far more interesting than your son. Shall we say, um, uh, 100000 100000 Yes, 100000 If you love your son, surely he's worth it. I haven't anything like that amount of money. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you believe for a moment that Martin has any money? Oh, no, no. But he will inherit a quarter of a million dollars from his mother's estate in a few months. Oh, so you know about that? Mm. Yes, of course. What other reason would you have for leading Martin on? None that I can think of. What if I were to tell Martin of our conversation? 
He wouldn't believe you. You can't do this to him. I'm afraid I must be getting back to my guest, Mr. Cabot. Now, wait, please. Please listen to me. Martin is everything I have. If I had the money, I'd gladly give it to you. But I haven't it. Oh, so sorry. Women like you don't deserve to lose. Will you please leave at once? If you don't give Martin up, I'll kill you. Oh, get out of here. I'll have my friend throw you out. I'm warning you. Stay away from Martin or I'll kill you. You tried to bribe her to give me up. Is that true? Yes, Martin, it is. You did that after I told you I love you? Yes, because I know she doesn't love you. And why weren't you able to buy her off? Because she wanted $100,000. You're lying. She never asked you for one cent. Have you ever known me to lie to you? Dad, I told you I was fully capable of making my own decisions, and I meant it. An hour ago, I asked Diana to marry me, and she accepted. You're, you're going to marry her? Yes. Just a few days. So you're going to ruin your life for a cheap gold digger? Dad! I told you not to speak about her like that. If you feel differently, Diane and I will be happy to see you. Get out. Get out, do you hear? All right, all right, I will. After all these years and everything I've tried to do for him. Well, Walter, were you able to do anything? No. Him? I'm not going to let him ruin his life, do you hear? But what can you do? If there's no bride, there can be no wedding. If there's no bride... Walter, you don't mean you... Why not? You think of anyone who deserves less to live? You're mad. For years, my hobby has been the study of famous murders. I've studied hundreds of cases closely. In each case, I was able to pick out the flaw that prevented it from being a perfect crime. And then one day, I began to work out a perfect crime for myself. Walter, what are you saying? I was merely doing it for fun, just as some men do crossword puzzles. But Norman, I did hit upon a way to commit a perfect murder... Now I have a motive. You must stop talking like that, Walter. There's no such thing as a perfect crime. You're wrong, Norman. And I'm going to prove it. Walter, can't you see that what you want to do is insane? It's far better that Martin marry that woman than for you to become a murderer. No. If Martin were to marry that woman, it would be the end for both of us. At least this way I can be certain that his life won't be ruined. And that's all that counts. As for the police, Norman, they'll never catch me. Never. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. Can, can you tell me the name of this horrible place? Well, there ain't nothing horrible about Valley Springs, stranger. 1,242 people think it's Mighty Pine Village. I've never seen an uglier place. What do people live here for? Oh, I've been drinking, haven't you? Well, I'm warning you, mister. You'd better stop insulting this village or I'll run you in. I'm the village council. Oh, so you're going to get rough. I will take this. Hey, hey yes, well. I'll learn you to push the law around. <sighs> you're under arrest for drunkenness and disorderly conduct. You and me are going to see George Hutchins, Justice to Peace. <laughs> Something our village half a dozen times, Your Honor. He attempted to attack me. And that's when I arrested him. Hmm. Did right, Pete. What you got to say to the charges, Mr. What's your name? I'm not gonna tell it. He sure had a jug full, Your Honor. Hmm. Charge is drunkenness, disorderly conduct. How do you plead, stranger? Gilly, Your Honor. Gilly. Yeah. Well, stranger, seeing you admit you Gilly, I'll only. Find you twenty dollars. Well, if I don't want to pay. Well, I'm afraid in that case you just spend the night and cash. I won't be intimidated. I'm not going to pay my fine, and you can't make me. Oh, dear. Pete, looks like you'll have to lock him up tonight. Take him away. Well, stranger, now you can see what the inside of our jail looks like. Huh. It uh, still ain't too late to pay your sign. Now, uh, don't you want to pay it and sleep in a nice, soft bed? No, I, I like it here. Which of the two cells is mine? Well, uh, you take the one on the right and I'll sleep in the other. I got to guard you. Go ahead, get in so I can lock the door. Just as you say, Constable. 
Now, I don't want to hear anything out here till morning. I'll have enough trouble sleeping in here without you bothering me. I'll be so quiet, comfortable, you won't even know I'm here. We dream. Mm would be perfect for my plan. Now, if only the door doesn't creak as I open it. Softly, softly. Oh, he's waking up. Oh, he's going back to sleep. There, I'm out. Now to get to the car and drive to the city for the most important part of the plan. If I turn on the lights, Miss Winters. You? Yes, Martin's father. What do you mean by breaking into my apartment? What do you want? What do I want? You remember what I said to you the other night? Oh, what you said? Oh, no, I... And I'll refresh your memory. I said I'd kill you if you didn't give Martin up. You wouldn't dare. Oh, but I would. Oh, my friends would be threatening me. You get the chair. I don't think I will, Miss Winters. Why are you looking at me like that? You're just trying to frighten me, aren't you? I tried to reason with you, but you wouldn't listen. You should have. No, you can't kill me. Stay away from me. Stay away from me, you hear? It's no use trying the door. I locked it when I came in, and I have the key. Please. Please listen to me. I'll do anything you want. I'll put Martin up. I'll go away. You had your chance. You wouldn't take it. Don't keep away. Don't touch me. I'm free! <laughs> <laughs> I'll just turn her wristwatch back to 12 and stop it. The exact time I was being arrested in Valley Spring, and my son is free. Free! Hey, hey, constable. Constable, wake up, wake up. I want another drink. Wake up, will you? What's all this noise about? Oh, 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 my back. Wait, what's the idea of waking me up, boy? It ain't even dawn yet. I want another drink and I'll take it straight. Oh, go to sleep, you hear? It, it, it's four o'clock and you ain't getting out of here until late in the morning. You got four hours yet. Now, I don't want to hear any more out of you. Oh, oh. Just so you say, Constable, anything to oblige a gentleman. Four hours more. <laughs> Good. Now I've established the fact that the constable spoke to me at four o'clock in the morning in my cell, and that I was very drunk. Oh, the perfect crime. Everything's worked out exactly as I planned. The police will never be able to prove a thing. In a few months, the murder will just be a thing of the past. And Martin and I will once more be as close as ever. Come in. Oh, hello, Kelly. Well, how's the DA's office this morning? Well, so I finally caught up with you. <laughs> My partner told me a few minutes ago that you've been looking for me. Hey, listen What's on for you? That's putting it mildly. There's been a five-state alarm out for you for the past 24 hours. What? Where have you been the last few days? Well, I've been vacationing at a small resort a hundred miles upstate. Kind of sudden vacation, wasn't it? What? Even your partner didn't know where you were. Well, I went there on the spur of the moment. Oh, you did, huh? Yes. Yeah. And where were you on the night of the 22nd? The night Diana Winters was murdered. Say, I read about that, Kelly. That's rather than... Not stalling. Where were you? <laughs> 
Frankly, Kelly, I don't recall where I was that night. I, I'm afraid I, I was a little drunk. You're going to have to do better than that for the D.A. Oh? Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to. I, I really can't remember where I was that night. Cabot, I think you're going to wind up in a place you're not going to like. In the chair. Set your hat. We're going down to headquarters. Ah, that sounds serious. Well, look, do you mind if I speak to my partner and explain matters to him? That won't be necessary. You'll be able to read all about it in the papers. And believe me, it isn't going to make pleasant reading. <laughs> witnesses have testified that the defendant, Walter Cabot, threatened to kill Diana Winters. And how has the defense replied to the charges of the state? It hasn't. Can we accept the flimsy story of the defendant? That he was drunk the night of the murder and hasn't any recollection of his actions? Perhaps Walter Cabot doesn't know where he was that night, but I do. He was in the apartment of Diana Winters, where he cold-bloodedly strangled her, as he vowed to do before a dozen witnesses. There is only one verdict you can render. Guilty of murder in the first degree. The state rests, Your Honor. Since you've insisted on defending yourself, are you ready for the defense's summation, Mr. Cabot? Your Honor, I've often observed the strange twists of fate by which a man is saved or condemned. My inability to recall any of my actions on the night of the 22nd left me without a defense. Yesterday, frankly, I regarded my case as being hopeless. Today, however, through a twist of fate, I have received a new lease on life. I'm now prepared to prove my whereabouts on the night in question. I should like to call upon a witness for the defense. You have the court's permission. Thank you, Your Honor. I wish to call Peter Wilk to the stand. Peter Wilk to the stand. Here I am. Yes, you right hand, please. You telling me swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. State your name and occupation, please. Uh, Peter Wilk. I'm constable for the village of Valley Springs. Mr. Wilk, will you tell the jury exactly what you told me this morning? Well, uh, yesterday, uh, George Hutchins, uh, he's our justice of the peace, and myself were looking at a city newspaper. And in it, we see a picture of a man, uh, Mr. Cabot, uh, right on the front page. It says he's being tried for a murder committed on the night of January 22nd. Well, George and me recognizes him right away as the fellow we locked up in our jail that night on a drunken and disorderly charge. <laughs> Good to see you again after all these months. Oh, Dad, can you ever forgive me for having run away when you needed me? Forgive you? There's nothing to forgive, son. Dad, I I know now how right you were about Diana. Oh, you don't know how happy it makes me to hear you say that, son. I've been through a great deal lately, but it doesn't matter now that I have you back. Oh, Dad, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I promise you I'll, I'll never let you down again. <laughs> It's been quite some time since I've seen you. Oh, yes, yes. Last time you were here, you put the cuffs on me for the Winters murder. Well, mistakes will happen. Uh, anything on your mind, Kelly? No, nothing special. Just friendly call. Oh. Well, thanks for dropping in, Kelly. Oh, uh, by the way, have you seen the latest edition? I oh, know. Anything of interest happen? Yeah, you might find it interesting. It could mean a client for you. Oh, really? What's happened? Well, here's the late paper. Read it for yourself. Oh, thanks. You suspect Charles of Winter's murder. Oh, no. No, it can't be. Why not? If you didn't kill Diana Winter, someone did. 
And we've got that someone down at headquarters. But you must be mistaken. What evidence have you got? Evidence? Yes. Oh, well, we can prove the guy we've got was at Diana Winter's apartment that night. But, uh, but he was seen leaving just after midnight. After a whale of a quarrel with her. Quarrel? What about? Oh, useful thing. Uh, we both know what Diana was. Two-timing gold digger. Yes, of course. She had plenty other boyfriends than your son. Only none of them knew about the others. But yes, but... That night, the guy who killed her found out a few things about her and bumped her off. No. I don't believe it. I told you he left right after midnight, didn't I? That's right. Well, her watch was found on the floor where she dropped it during that fatal struggle. Stopped just at 12. And that watch is going to hang the guy. <laughs> we may have been wrong in your case, but this time we have the right man and we'll make it stick. Even though the evidence is circumstantial. Well, I... I'd better be running along. Good night. And I keep the paper. You might want to read the whole story. New suspect held for Winter's murder. District Attorney uncovers apparently conclusive evidence of guilt. I can't be. I had it planned perfectly so that no one, no one could be held for it. There's no such thing as a perfect crime, Walter. Uh, the murderer always overlooks something. No such thing as the perfect crime. Murderer always overlooks something. Norman said that. But I knew better. And now an innocent man has been arrested for my crime. Whoever he is, he's innocent. I must save him. Yes. I can't let him die. <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury, you have reached a verdict. You have found the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Silence in the courtroom. No, 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 it can't be. You're wrong. Silence in the courtroom. I'll have it cleared. Mr. Cabot, you'll kindly refrain from such outbursts. But, Your Honor, I protest. The evidence submitted by the state was purely circumstantial. There was no real... May I remind Mr. Cabot that this case may be appealed... Your attorney is quite uncalled for. But the prisoner is innocent, Your Honor. You haven't any right to... Another such outburst, Mr. Cabot, and I'll hold you for contempt of court. Your Honor, the defendant was convicted on purely circumstantial evidence. But I have positive proof of his innocence. Why did you wait until after the jury rendered a verdict to make this statement? I hoped, Your Honor, that the defendant would be acquitted and I wouldn't have to reveal my proof of his innocence, but I would like to do so now. Yeah, this is highly irregular, Mr. Cabot. But since the jury has already rendered its verdict and cannot be influenced, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I know for a certainty that the defendant is not guilty of the murder of Diana Winters. For it was I who committed the crime. In the courtroom, Mr. Cabot, you say you confessed the murder of Diana Winters? Yes, Your Honor. I and I alone am responsible for her death. You must believe me. Mr. Cabot... Only three months ago, you were acquitted of the murder of Diana Winters. You well know that a man may be tried only once for a crime. This confession now can do you no harm. The court sees your confession as being motivated only by your desire to see the defendant go free. No, no, Your Honor, that isn't true. I did murder Diana Winters. Then I broke her watch, and I set it back to 12 o'clock. You must believe me, you must. Bailiff. Have Mr. Cabot escorted from this courtroom. Prisoner will remain in his cell. No, 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 wait, Your Honor. Listen to me. He isn't guilty. I am. I do not Since that day in court, I've confessed a thousand times, and yet no one will believe me. No one. But you, sir, you will help me, won't you? We can't let an innocent man die for a murder I committed. No, of course not, but... Well, I hardly see how Every I... Every minute that passes brings him closer to the end. We must save him. We must. If you only help Hello, Cabot. Oh, Kelly. I was just telling this gentleman here my story. We can't let an innocent man go to the electric chair. Kelly, you're a smart man. You believe I murdered Diana Winters, don't you? Yes, I do. You do? Then... Then you'll help me save him? People wouldn't believe me any more than they do you. But they would, Kelly. They would. Why should they believe your story? You can't be tried again for the murder of Diana Winters. And what man in your position wouldn't confess? 
to save his own son. But he's innocent, Kelly. Martin, my son is innocent. He was convicted only because he was near her apartment that night. And now there's so little time to do anything. The execution is set for midnight, and it's all the... It's 12. Already. No. No. I'm sorry, Cabot. <laughs> hey, so rich. Oh, my son. <laughs> my <laughs> I just heard chapter 67, the final chapter of this series of The Mysterious Traveler, Tales of the Strange and Terrifying. In tonight's story, Murder Goes Free, Ed Latimer played Walter Cabot, Tony Barrett played Martin, and Irene Winston played Diana. The Mysterious Traveler is written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan, and original music is played by Henry Silverne. The entire production is under the direction of Jock McGregor. <laughs> Traveler is presented from our New York studios. This concludes the present series of The Mysterious Traveler. Next Saturday evening at 9.30 Eastern Wartime over most of these stations, Mutual will present a new program, radio's first nationwide audience participation mystery series. It's called Calling All Detectives. We invite you to be with us for Calling All Detectives next Saturday night at 9.30 Eastern Wartime. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs> 